Hello, everybody. Uh, I am Brother Luke. I want to take a few minutes now to kind of catch up a little bit and, and uh, vent a little bit. This is, uh, well, I don't know the date today, but uh, pretty soon it's going to be August 26th. <clears throat> and uh, that will be uh, uh, my wife's birthday and also uh, our anniversary. <clears throat> That's right. I married my wife on her birthday. I thought, what's the birth best birthday present I could give her? Something that will last a lifetime. So, it was me. <laughs> well, pardon my attempt at humor, but August 26th will be 42 years of marriage. Over the 42 years, we've had a lot of conversations. And my wife, uh, she's probably told me every story about her life. Uh, you know, before I met her in 1979, and uh, and of course even after that, even even while I I was with her uh, all these years, uh, she tells me stories about things that uh, you know I'm perfectly aware of. But she likes to tell me stories, and most of these stories she's told me over and over again. And I always enjoy listening to her stories, even though I've heard them before. She likes to tell me, and I like to listen. But we were in a conversation, uh, and somehow it got around to uh, talking about her father. And uh, her, her, her father was a very, very admirable uh, man in many ways. Um, and everything I knew about him and learned about him, um, uh, my respect for him just grew and grew. Um, he died probably about 10 or 15 years ago now. It's been, I can't remember how long it's been, but quite, quite a while. You know, uh, and, and, and then also made me think about my own father and how much I always admired him and respected him. But um, the interesting thing and, and the, the, the sad thing is for in my case is that um, uh, until I was 24 years old, I never told my father that I loved him. And he never told me he loved me either. It was, I think, a generational thing. His generation, men didn't talk like that. They didn't share their feelings. They didn't express themselves. And then I ended up developing those same qualities. Uh, but I, I recognize this was a problem that I, uh, I needed to tell my father that I loved him. So he came to visit me. I had moved to Florida after college, and he came to visit me. And, and uh, I thought, well, he's getting older. And I, I, who knows, we live 2,000 miles apart now. I might not ever see him again. Well, I felt really pressed to, to make sure at least once he's, I've got to tell him that I do love him. So I did. And, uh, and it was uh, it was kind of hard to say. Is, isn't that ridiculous that when you love someone, but hard to express it? <clears throat> but I'm glad I did. And 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 he, I think it it, it uh, allowed him that uh, something happened when I told him I loved him that he was free to tell me that he did love me. And I didn't doubt it. I never doubted he loved me. I just knew he didn't talk like that, didn't express it. But the point is here is that uh, my father, my wife's father, in many ways, they were great men. Uh, and I, I'm thinking that uh, there's many things that, in hindsight, 
I wish I had told my father. You know, I, I wish that I had told my wife's father uh, <clears throat> about how I did admire them so much. So I guess one thing, I, a point I want to make here is that uh, I hope that uh, if you're uh, neglecting to tell people these things, and if it's, if it's, if it's difficult for you, uh, make an effort to tear down that wall and, 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 and uh, open up that kind of communication and let the people who you admire and respect and love, let them know all, all I can do now is uh, oftentimes I pray, Lord, if you would communicate this to my loved ones, the ones that I want to tell something and that I didn't, I didn't when I had the chance. I I really hope that the the Lord will do that for me. Uh, mm -hmm. So, these are some regrets I have, and I, I certainly, uh, now that I have the benefit of hindsight, I certainly don't want that to, to be a current problem, so I, I'm going to make an effort to make sure that things are not left unsaid. Uh, well, those are about the regrets, and uh, I, I also want to kind of fill you in on some kind of current events in, in my life. Um, many of you know that I've had a lot of health issues. Uh, I, you know, I had to have brain surgery because of a condition called trigeminal neuralgia. Uh, then, uh, of course, I, I had to have open heart surgery, which was a quadruple bypass surgery uh, and I've had chronic back problems uh, uh, very bad arthritis that I inherited from my father <laughs> it runs in the family uh, and that's caused me back problems my whole life and eventually I necessitated having back surgery and that didn't go so well because I had to have three three back surgeries in, in like a seven day period because of various complications. So none of that was easy, uh, but um, I, I still have to um, um, take uh, quite a few medications for these conditions, for, for pain, for my heart, and so on. But uh, a lot of these medications I take, actually I have, I think, nine or ten prescriptions, and then I take nine or ten other things that are over the counter that are also necessary. So I, it's quite a job every day just to sort it all out and try to stay on top of that without making a mistake. But I noticed that on six of the prescriptions that I take, there's a caution. A cautionary statement on, on six of them. It says, do not drive or operate heavy machinery while you're on this. Uh, because they, they cause drowsiness. You can, it's hard to stay awake. And, and that would be something to take seriously if, if you took one prescription that had that warning. But in my case, there are six prescriptions that tell me uh, to, not to do that. Well, I haven't heeded that over the years, but I, I feel now that it's reached the point where uh, I have no choice because it's, um, first of all, I know I can't, no, I can no longer drive at night. Uh, I've had some incidents recently where uh, I really f feel like I'm just because I, I can't see well enough at night anymore to uh, uh, feel like I'm going to run over a curb or, or it just really is. It's, I, I have to admit, it's, 
It's not safe for me to drive at night. Now, driving in the daytime, the problem with that is that uh, I, I could fall asleep. Sometimes I've fallen asleep while here I'm on the computer typing something, and two hours later, I wake up and have my fingers on the keyboard, and I've been here for two hours of sleep. And I just, I just can fall asleep uh, uh, like that. So I, uh, I feel that even driving during the daytime, uh, it takes so much focus that um, uh, I know that if I don't pay complete attention, that I could easily go into like a, a trance. It happened to me once many years ago where I had taken some medication. This was not really medication. This was recreational drugs uh, back in, in my youth. But this experience really uh, is a frightening thing, is that uh, uh, I went into a, I don't know if I fell asleep at the wheel, or it was, they call it, I think, road hypnosis. But I felt like I went into a trance and, and, and while I was driving, and I ran into a car that was stopped at a red light, and I'm going and just ran right in the back at about 15 miles an hour. Unfortunately, nobody was hurt. My car was totaled. The man ahead of me, his car was damaged. Uh, I ended up paying for some damage to his car, and I got a ticket uh, for um, like reckless driving. But fortunately, they didn't know that it was because of this. I was on drugs at the time. Um, but the point I'm making is that uh, it's a scary thing to be able to worry about falling asleep while you're driving, and that's the condition, the state that I find myself in now. So I really, I have to admit, I really should not be driving in the car. My wife, um, she also, uh, she's having eye surgery in the uh, next couple of weeks. Uh, and I think that will correct her problem for driving at night because uh, she hadn't felt comfortable driving at night now for a couple of years. Um, but driving in the daytime is no problem for her. Um, so, <clears throat> um, the reason I'm telling you about this is that I realize that uh, these things now are going to be interfering with some of the things I really want to do and I feel I need to do. Um, I have a local church that I've been going to, and, and, uh, and part of that church go, goes uh, and does street evangelism. And I've joined that team, and that's what this shirt is here. The way this is in my life, this shirt is something that we all wear as part of that team of uh, street uh, evangelism. Uh, so I've been attending the church, and I've been going out on Fremont Street on Thursday nights uh, and participating and helping and, and very much enjoying it, enjoying the fellowship, the church, and the fellowship in the street preaching. But uh, because of all these things, uh, I really don't think I can do it. I don't, I don't have the ability to... Uh, transport myself and it's just, it's just not going to be able I'm not going to be able to do it so I'm very disappointed with that I won't be able to drive to the church it's about a half hour drive from my house and every time I make that drive it's it's as I said it's kind of a scary thing to drive even at the daytime and then once the sun goes down it's uh, driving home is very dangerous and I shouldn't be risking my life and the lives of others uh, to do these things. Uh, another problem is that in Las Vegas, it's very hot in the summertime. You know, I, I was born and raised here, so I've been used to the heat all my life, but a, a few years ago, I got overheated and I had to be taken in an ambulance to the hospital and my they said my heart stopped twice during the ambulance ride. And when I was in the hospital, I, I just knew I was dying because I, I was felt so weak. I felt not only could I not lift a finger, 
but I couldn't even uh, uh, really feel like I had the strength to take a breath. How tired do you have to be to not to feel like I'm, I'm not strong enough to even breathe? Uh, but I uh, I lived through that obviously, uh, but it was the first indication that I had heart problems. Uh, but the reason I'm telling you that now is that another factor, of course, is going out uh, doing that street preaching in the summertime, especially uh, that kind of heat. I can't take it. I've I felt that it's it's uh, the last time I was out there. It was uh, I got so weak and tired that I, I had to leave early. So um, I'm, the only reason I'm sharing this with you is that I just uh, we we're supposed to pray for each other, tell each other our needs. And so I ask for everybody to to pray for me. Uh, I, I don't know what the solution is for all these things, or whether it's um, getting healed uh, or, or finding something else that I can do under these circumstances. Uh, because it feels like uh, uh, I've become almost useless. I really need to find some way of fellowshipping and also ministering. So, um, also, if, if, if you watch this video and you, you have any of these kinds of, of problems, then maybe it'd be good for all of us to talk about it together. I, I don't think I'm the only one going through these difficult things. Uh, all right, and uh, I, I do hope and pray that uh, soon uh, we, we will be able to get our regular Church of the Eternally Secure uh, programs running again. Uh, hopefully that will happen soon. All right, thank you for listening. Um, the main thing I'd like everybody to think about is regrets. Yes, uh, I have a few regrets. So if there was things that you need to tell those you love and respect and you haven't done it, get it done. Thank you for listening. Bless you all in the name of our great Savior God, Jesus.